Welcome to Analytic Combinatorics Part 2. Uh, we're going to dive right into the material today, uh, assuming that uh, everyone uh, who's watching this uh, has either taken Analytic Combinatorics Part 1 or has watched the introductory video uh, from Analysis of Algorithms to Analytic Combinatorics that uh, was posted a bit before the class. Uh, today we're going to start uh, right out with uh, ordinary generating functions uh, and the symbolic method. Uh, so a quick overview of what analytic combinatorics is. Uh, again, it's a calculus for analyzing properties of large combinatorial structures. So what we do is use the symbolic method that I'm going to talk about today to uh, define a class of combinatorial objects along with a notion of size and an associated generating function. Uh, and then we use standard operations or combinatorial constructions to develop a specification of the structure. And the result is, via the symbolic method, a direct derivation of an equation that has to be satisfied by the generating function, either an implicit or an explicit uh, equation. Uh, and then the classic next steps are to uh, extract coefficients and use classic asymptotics to estimate them and eventually get asymptotic estimates that quantify the desired properties. Uh, this uh, general approach uh, is uh, what we covered in part one and is covered uh, in our second edition of our book, uh, Introduction to Analysis of Algorithms. Uh, for uh, part two, we're uh, going to talk about the symbolic method in more detail and many other uh, examples. Uh, but uh, when it comes to uh, estimating the asymptotic values of the coefficient, we're going to use complex asymptotics. We don't have to find an explicit solution. Uh, and that'll be uh, the second part of this part two, where we'll talk about directly deriving asymptotic estimates that uh, give us the desired properties. Uh, and that's what the analytic combinatorics uh, book is all about. First part's about the symbolic method. Second part's uh, about uh, uh, deriving directly asymptotic estimates uh, of the coefficients. Uh, so uh, the overview is uh, a bit like this. These are the uh, eight chapters uh, that we're going to talk about. Uh, the symbolic method, uh, there's three chapters, ordinary generating functions, exponential, and multivariate. Uh, and then uh, some chapters on complex analysis. Uh, and the idea is that we, we have a specification. We start with a specification. And the symbolic method is a process that gives us a generating function equation. Uh, and then complex asymptotics gives us another set of processes that immediately give us the asymptotic estimates that uh, are a desired uh, result. Uh, so uh, today we're going to talk just about the symbolic method and for the next couple of lectures. Uh, and again, there's some easier examples that moves a bit slower in part one and in analysis of algorithms. Uh, in the purple book, an analytic combinatorics has a very rigorous treatment. Uh, this lecture is somewhat in between. It's an overview that uh, assumes uh, some f familiarity with generating functions and basic mathematics like co leg is covered in part one of this course. Uh, if you move, find that we're moving a bit quickly, uh, refer back to uh, Analysis of Algorithms book. <clears throat> if you find that we're moving a bit slowly, uh, read uh, chapters one, two, and three of Analytic Combinatorics. Uh, and then uh, within a lecture or two, uh, we'll all be moving at the same pace, I think. Uh, so basic definitions. A combinatorial class is a set of combinatorial objects and an associated size function. Uh, that's our starting point. That's the object of study. Uh, and the, today what we're going to talk about is the, as a primary object of study, the ordinary generating function associated with the class. And that's a formal power series where you have a, a variable z and you sum for all objects in the class z to the size of that object. That's the ordinary generating function. So the size function uh, is like an absolute value, just says that's the size of the object. <coughs> and then the, uh, class name, the class name is usually a capital letter with the same letter as the generating function. Uh, and then the object name is usually a lowercase uh, letter uh, of the uh, sa same letter. <coughs> now, uh, there's a very elementary, in elementary identity that's fundamental to uh, all the manipulations of the symbolic method. 
and that is this generating function, where we look at all the objects, raise z to the size of the object, uh, that's equal to uh, summing uh, for all n uh, the number objects of size n times z to the n. Because uh, if there's a sub n objects of size n, then there's a sub n terms uh, on that left-hand side, one for each object of size n, and you collect them together, uh, you get a sub n uh, z to the n. And that's the fundamental identity that uh, we're going to work with. And our goal is to find good estimates of uh, this uh, value a sub n. And we refer to that as, uh, with the notation, uh, square bracket z to the n, that means the coefficient of z to the n in a of z. That's a sub n. Uh, and again, I mentioned the conventions. Usually we try to uh, use a Roman letter for the class name. Uh, for the generating function name, it's the same letter with an argument. Uh, <coughs> for uh, In the book, we use a slightly different font. Uh, object variable is just lowercase of the same letter. Uh, and then the coefficient is subscripted uh, of the same letter. Uh, <coughs> and size, usually we use capital N uh, or little n. Uh, and this uh, kind of adopts a fantasy that we have a different letter for each class, uh, but actually uh, there's only 26 letters and we look at way, way more classes. So sometimes we have uh, conflicts uh, in these names. Uh, but uh, we do the best we can. Now, so with the symbolic method, what we can do is specify the class and at the same time characterize the generating function. Uh, and that's the process that uh, we want to talk about today. Uh, <coughs> so there's a number of basic combinatorial objects uh, <coughs> that uh, are characterized well by ordinary generating functions. Uh, and they're called unlabeled classes. And uh, we'll talk about that distinction uh, later. Uh, so integers or strings, which are sequences of characters, or recursive structures, uh, trees, languages, uh, and then uh, compositions and partitions, uh, which are uh <coughs> compositions or positive integers that sum to n, and partitions or unordered compositions. And we'll look at all of those soon. Uh, so to describe those combinatorial classes, we use uh, basic uh, operations or constructions. Uh, so if we have two classes, A and B, of unlabeled objects, and again, we'll talk about what that means later on, that have the generating functions A of Z and B of Z, then uh, we can perform some natural operations on them. So the disjoint union is just uh, take an uh, 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 object from A and an object from B. And the, uh, <coughs> that makes a new class, and the uh, ordinary generating function of that class is just uh, sum the two generating functions. Uh, and then there's a Cartesian product. Uh, if we take a pair of copies, one from A, one from B, then we get a class whose ordinary generating function is the product of the two generating functions. And the proofs of these are easy, and we'll look at it in just a second. Uh, and then there's sequence, which is uh, uh <coughs> apply the product multiple times, taking uh, either none or one or uh, pairs or triples, uh, any sequence of objects from uh, a class, then you get another class whose generating function is 1 over 1 minus A of Z. Uh, those are the, with those basic constructions, uh, we can uh, describe uh, quite a rich set of combinatorial classes. Uh, but we also have many other uh, constructions, and we'll look at some today. Uh, <coughs> so here's just the proofs about the generating functions. Uh, so uh, for A plus B, if you have an object that uh, belongs to either A or B, uh, and you sum uh, over all objects in A plus B, then you can split the sum into two parts, uh, the ones from A and the ones from B, and by definition, then that gives you uh, the sum of the two generating functions. Uh, for Cartesian product, it's uh, slightly uh, more complicated, but not much. Uh, if you take an ordered pair of objects uh, from A and B, all ordered pairs, and you sum over all ordered pairs, uh, then you can uh, treat that as a convolution of uh, two sums. Uh, and <coughs> since uh, there's one from A and one from B, and we're combining them, then the object that's the ordered pair, the size of that object is the sum of the sizes of the two objects that we combine. 
Uh, and those are independent, so we can just split those sums and get the product. Uh, so the generating function for the Cartesian product is the product of, of the generating functions. Uh, and for sequence, uh, well, <clears throat> if you take a sequence of size k, then just uh, extending the product operation, you get uh, a of z to the k. Uh, and sequence is uh, 0 plus 1 plus so forth, or for actually for any sequence of integers. Uh, and so if you take any size, it's just 1 plus a of z plus a of z squared uh, and so forth, which is just 1 over 1 minus uh, a of z. Uh, so that's the correspondences for uh, the basic operations that uh, show that uh, if we apply one of these operations, then uh, we immediately imply a relationship on, on the generating function. Uh, and again, if you find uh, this proof uh, a bit confusing and want to see uh, some more basic examples, uh, please take a look at uh, Chapter 5 of our Introduction to Analysis of Algorithms book or uh, in Part 1 uh, of the Analytic Combinatorics course. <coughs> so that's a quick introduction to the symbolic method. <coughs>